Now let's talk about Preview AO. And we've touched on this a little bit uh, already, actually. So if we hit the comma key to go into our Lightbox menu, if you go in here to Project, Demo Projects, if you open up the Demo Greyhound Project, it's already got AO turned on for you. And it's actually got something we're going to talk about in a second, or the video after this, which is Radial Overlay. But if you just want to grab one of these things and not have to bring in the project settings, because if, if you have tools already open, and you just want the tool out of this project, what you can do is you can go in here to load tools from projects, go into that folder, which is going to be C program files, pixel logic, Zebra 2021 Z projects. And now we can just bring in dog ZPR. Nope. Wrong one. Demo projects, demo Greyhound. So that way we can just bring in that sculpt. And if you accidentally messed the, uh, put a little thing on your document, just hit control and to clear your canvas. So now we have this tool uh, available for us just to kind of play around with. So let's switch this material over here to Skin Shader 4. And you can see by uh, default under Subtool, the, it has a poly paint turned on. If you turn that colorize off, uh, you're just going to get a white value because we have white chosen over here in our color picker. And it, it's, it's a little bit washed out. Um, if you want to bring in a little bit more of a realistic look. And by that, I mean, if you look up in the corner of the room you're in now, where the walls meet together, you're going to see they get a little bit darker. Or really, if you have anything laying on the surface, uh, you know, if you have something, a mouse on your desk's table, for example, example, whenever the mouse gets really close to the desk, not only is there a cast shadow, there's kind of an ambient occlusion shadow. And previously in ZBrush, what you had to do to get that is you had to go in here to render, and again, if you don't have this, you can just double click these little arrows over here and then go in here to render menu, grab that little white dot and just drag it over here. And underneath render properties uh, by shadows, shadows is on by default, but there's also an AO ambient occlusion pass you can render out. So you can turn that on. Now, if you want to make play with these settings, let's go in here. Let's open up shadow. Let's take both of these and put them like to 0.5, put this angle up a little bit. So the shadows get a little bit softer as it gets away from the source of the light. And then down here under AO, Let's take that blur way down, say like blur of one, and let's uh, crank up our rays and our resolution just a little bit here. So now, as I'm changing these values, nothing's happening. However, when I hit this BPR button, it's going to run a best preview render. And now you're going to see we have shadows in here. And boy, that went a lot faster than I'm used to. Let's see. Let me, maybe there's been some performance enhancements in here under BPR render as well. There we go. So now we're getting a little bit of AO. You're going to see if I move my camera here, uh, all of that darkness where the leg meets the tree trunk here, it disappears. However, if I hit BPR, there we go. We're getting a cast shadow and we're getting a little bit of a darker, more contrasty line where those two objects meet like they would in real life. If we want to see the result of that, we can go over here to BPR render pass. If you just hover over this, you can see there's a shadow pass and there's our AO pass. However, as soon as you move your object, all that stuff disappears. Well, no longer. All you have to do, and again, we're over here in our render menu, so if you haven't moved it over, you can go in here to render, and then we'll go ahead and close all these menus down. Way down here, there's a new preview AO. And again, I'm gonna go ahead and just dock this over here so it's always open for us. So now what we have available to us is a real-time, turn on occlusion, boom. There's your occlusion, so as these objects get closer to each other, you're seeing more of that ambient occlusion and it's built in. It's screen space AO and it's real time, like I said. So if I go in here, and again, we've been playing around with thick skin. If we go over here to our thick skin, it's already turned on for this model. Hit B, T, S for thick skin clay. And as we sculpt, that AO updates in real time. Now there's just a few options over here. So here's occlusion on or off, obviously. Uh, quality of 10, and this is gonna give you the most accurate quality or quality of one. That's gonna kind of give you a faster result, more performant result, uh, but maybe not super accurate. So, you know, you can kind of pick a medium quality here. You may notice on a super high density models, uh, having the quality up at 10 while you're trying to sculpt may slow it down just a bit. So that may be something you'll have to fill out. On this one, it's fine. It's you know, there's not a whole lot of polygons here, but on super dense models, you may see a little bit of a performance hiccup. In that case, maybe drop that quality level down a bit. You can also go in here to intensity. It's pretty obvious. So here's a lot of occlusion. And then down here to zero is no occlusion. So you can just dial that in to whatever's appropriate for the model you're using.
main radius is going to be kind of the fall off on your major shape. So if I crank this up, you're going to see it's not really doing micro detail ambient occlusion. It's just kind of getting hitting this shoulder and this back leg. It's kind of giving you a little bit more of a fall off on those big areas. And then the secondary one, we'll look at your smaller details and kind of dial those in. So this one you're going to see in kind of these secondary forms. The main forms are already taken care of by the main radius. The secondary forms are taken care of by the secondary radius. Pretty self-explanatory, like I said. Uh, here's the blur. So if you really want to blur out your AO, you can crank that up. Uh, generally speaking, I keep that at zero. And that's it. That's the basics of the screen space, real-time ambient occlusion. You can turn it on or off here. As you sculpt, it'll update on the fly. So you turn off thick skin here and go and move brush. You're going to see, you know, even as I move this out, you know, we're getting a little bit of an ambient occlusion. As I move this geo, it's showing up on the fly. Very, very neat. Now, if you just want to see your ambient occlusion, and if that's all you need to know about AO, then you're, you're done with this video. We're going to do a slight deep dive like we've kind of done on the previous videos. Uh, we can go in here to our material. Let's just choose a, if you choose a flat material, um, everything's going to disappear. No ambient occlusion. Uh, we go in here to basic material, and if we want to change the material settings, let's take this material one and just drop it over on this side. And we go in here to modifiers. We can crank up the ambient and crank up that diffuse. If you crank up the ambient too far, you're really only getting preview shadows. We'll get into that in just a second. Turn our specular down. Go in here to the diffuse curve. You can even, uh, you know, crank that focal shift over just a little bit. And that way, as we turn the occlusion on and off, you might get a better idea of what that occlusion is looking like. Now, I mentioned here, you're still getting shadow information. So this is where, you know, we'll go into preview shadows here. And you might notice our object shadow actually plays a pretty pivotal role in our occlusion. In fact, if I take our object shadow from 0.3 down to 0 and we turn occlusion on, nothing happens. So let's switch back over to another material so we can see this in action a little bit better. In fact, we'll start with a matcap gray. So ambient occlusion on and off doesn't do anything because really our object shadow is what's controlling our real-time preview shadows and our preview AO. They're kind of one and the same. So if you never go in here, and this is always just set to 0.3, and you can go through here and just change your AO intensity. You're absolutely fine. Continue along your merry way. If you want to go in here and play with your preview shadows and see if you can play around with this value along with any AO settings to kind of dial in exactly what you're looking for, just know that that's available to you. In fact, if you want a higher intensity, and these are preview shadows, so this kind of plays uh, along with this light here. So we're going to take this light menu now. A lot of menus open. And as we move this light around, it's not going to do anything because uh, matte cap materials don't actually have uh, anything to do with the light system. It's all baked in here. But if we choose like basic material 2 and on this one, let's go down here and change that diffuse up to 100 so we can see a little bit better. So we've got AO turned on and as we move the light around, you're going to see, and actually if you tap on the light too, it's going to send it around back and forth. So here you're going to see the lights updating and our preview shadow is updating. So we'll turn this back down to 0.3. And in fact, you know, you can also crank up the intensity of your light. So you say crank it up to one. That's also going to affect uh, the preview shadow. We'll put that down to 8.8. .8. And if you want a higher contrast AO, you can actually go in here and you can turn off deep shadow. So if I crank up that intensity here, and I crank down these radiuses here so we can kind of see our AO here. So if I turn on deep shadow, I guess contrast was the wrong word. In fact, it might be a little bit easier. This is kind of a loosely detailed model. Let's hit the comma key, go into Z projects here, demo projects, and we'll load up everybody's favorite favorite uh, earthquake model. And again, we still have uh, well, the availability of the preview AO. So I'm going to go in here, hold down shift, turn off all these, turn off the paintbrush here while holding down shift to get rid of all the poly paint. And then here you can see there's that AO. Let's crank up that intensity. And really, this deep shadow really kind of cranks up uh, that occlusion contrast quite a bit. Now, like we mentioned before, if we turn off the occlusion button and we go over here to our render properties, we make sure AO is turned on. We can go in here to our VPR shadow, VPR AO, change any of these settings we want, maybe crank up the angle a little bit, crank down the blur, crank up the rays and resolution. And again, with preview AO off and I hit VPR, 
and we go over here to render pass and here's our shadow pass right here and then here's our AO pass so again you can just click on these and export these as PSDs or BMPs or TIFFs uh, and then composite these into whatever program you'd like but that's your AO pass from this view however if I go down here and I turn on our preview AO and then I hit BPR render again you're gonna see our ambient occlusion pass doesn't even exist anymore and our preview AO has been added to our shadow pass because technically it's in the shadow preview which we know now because we've been messing around with preview shadows which is actually controlling the real-time AO so again we turn this off and run VPR there's our AO pass back and our shadow pass with no ambient occlusion uh, because again we turn the preview AO off